You may have heard of our gut being referred to as our second brain for the term butterflies in the stomach when we are nervous or the way to someone's heart is through their stomach and so on. These terms are not by accident. This is because there's something called the gut brain access, which you probably have heard of at some point in your life. The gut is constantly sending signals to our brain and messages as well. So how does it do that? So let's talk about three ways that it does that. And then we're going to talk about how stress plays a role in diverticular disease. So stress can play a role in multiple facets of our body, but in the case of diverticular disease and diverticulitis, it can play a role through certain mechanisms. And it's not just a one plus one equals two. So it's not black and white that stress equals diverticular disease. We're not saying that in this video, but it's more of a global thing affecting our body and mind as a whole, where your anatomy gets compromised, your immunity gets compromised, your gut microbiome and your mental health as well. So let's first target the three ways that this connection is made. So the first way is a chemical connection. So the gut microbiome has trillions of bacteria. So they are very important. There's more of them than there are of you, of cells in your body. So they don't just sit around there. They actively produce chemical signals that influence our mood and our behavior. So take serotonin, the happy hormone, for an example. 95% of serotonin is produced in the gut, not in the brain probably didn't know that. This highlights that this is very important and it plays a role in regulating our emotions and our well-being. Dopamine is another one that can be produced in the gut as well. This is a neurotransmitter involved in reward and motivation. So by influencing these chemical messengers, our gut microbiome can significantly impact our mental state, our mental health, and our overall behavior. Then we have a hormonal connection. So Beyond just the neurotransmitters, the gut-brain axis is involved in a lot of pathways. One of them is the HPA axis. So this is the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and the adrenal glands. So they are, they are the, the trio there. So when we experience stress, then this gets activated. These three get activated, and then they release stress hormones like cortisol, like adrenaline. So this then indicates that there is a change in our gut microbiome. And when there is a change there, then it impacts this hormonal balance and then it potentially worsens stress-related conditions. Then we move on to the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is often called the wandering nerve or the parasympathetic nervous system. So this regulates involuntary bodily functions like digestion, heart rate, and the immune response. It's not just there, but it also does other things with the gut and the brain. So signals, they travel along this nerve and then they influence our mood, our stress levels, even our cognitive function. So you have to maintain a good vagal tone overall for a good overall well-being. We can talk about vagal tone in another video. That's probably a topic for another three videos. So now let's talk about how we link stress to diverticular disease. If you like this video so far, I'm a medical doctor. I'm a family medicine physician. Please like and subscribe for more. We make lots of videos on these kinds of topics. Now let's talk about stress and diverticular disease. So how does it now, those three mechanisms, how do they play a role? So five ways, let's go through five ways together. So there's an increased amount of inflammation. So stress, it's not just a mental thing. It's a tangible thing. You can measure it. There's more stress hormones. There's more pro-inflammatory substances. This sets the stage for more inflammation than in the body not just the GI tract, but in the body. And then in the case of diverticular disease, this can contribute to further flare-ups. Again, it's not one plus one, but it's a contributing factor. And there's an inflammatory cascade. Think of it like a waterfall. And then stress contributes to this. Then the second way is an altered gut microbiome. So we touched upon this. So we have good bacteria, bad bacteria. When we disrupt this fine balance, which stress can do, it leads to dysbiosis. We made another video on that. Please check it out. This dysbiosis not only compromises our gut health, but it also exacerbates inflammation, which then feeds into that cycle. Then we move on to the third way it does it, impaired immune function. So immune function is super important for the gut, to prevent infections and so on. But if we have chronic stress, it can impair the immune function and then it leaves the body more vulnerable. And in the case of diverticula and those pouches that form in your intestine, maybe it's more susceptible to those infections that form. If you're curious about the definitions of diverticular disease, diverticulitis and so on, please check out our other videos as well. 
Then we move on to the altered gut motility. So gastrointestinal motility is very important. It's the contraction and the relaxation of those digestive tract muscles. It's regulated by the gut-brain axis. So by that vagal nerve we were talking about as well earlier on. So stress disrupts this intricate balance, and then it leads to altered bowel habits. So diarrhea, constipation. This predisposes you to diverticular disease because we talked about constipation and how that's a big, big problem in Western society now that we don't talk about enough, colon transit time and so on. You can check another video on that, but that's the mechanism there. And then we have poor coping behavior. So this is something that's not talked about often enough as well. So when we face chronic stress, we react poorly to it, unfortunately. We pick up unhealthy habits. So we start eating more junk food. We start picking up nasty habits like alcohol and smoking. We don't hydrate enough. Overall, we develop a sedentary lifestyle. And this, of course, exacerbates gastrointestinal conditions and diverticular disease is one of them, absolutely. So by addressing stress through healthier coping strategies, we can then mitigate this factor. So the gut-brain access, it serves as a vital link between our emotional state and our gastrointestinal health. So this is incredibly important. So by understanding these relationships that we highlighted in this video, we can then lead a healthier life and improved overall well-being. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of this issue, what you think of these connections, what you think, how you cope with these stress, how you cope with your own stress, and what we what you would like us to make further videos on. Like and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one.